everybody. This is Edwin, the Magic Engineer. And uh, I wanted to make a video showing uh, what my actual history of being an actual engineer is. I wanted to talk about what it is I do. So you guys have some frame of reference, kind of like where I'm coming from when I'm describing some of the things I'm talking about. And I also wanted to open up the possibility that at some point, if any of you had questions and wanted to ask me about, you know, what my career actually is or about some of the things I work on, as long as I'm allowed to talk about those things you ask questions about, I'll do my best to go ahead and answer them. Anyways, maybe a better spot to start is kind of what made me become an engineer. And it started when I was like 12 years old, 13, I don't remember the exact age. I got my first radio control car for Christmas and my dad helped me build the first one. Then the next year I got another and I built that one and then I started just getting into like how to build the cars. And so this is the, the kind of thing that I got into, but this is a current car. This isn't one of the old ones. But uh, these cars, when you put them together, you build like everything in them. I had to learn how to wire wrap motors. I actually did that myself. I had to learn all about the electronics of the cars and you learn about mechanical engineering when it, you learn about like the way the cars work and the suspension and the transmission. Then I started getting into racing and this was in California. So I used to go to Sacramento Mini Wheels back then, which existed uh, way a long time ago and I used to race there. So this was a huge hobby for me, and when I got to my first semester in college, I already knew right off the bat that I wanted to actually be an engineer. So this was kind of the inspiration. When I was in college, I actually did two majors. I did one in electrical slash electronic engineering. That was one major. And then the other one was computer engineering. So one was hardware, the other was software. And so the two of them came together in this really neat way because I was really interested in both hardware and software. And I've got this because this was my senior project. This was called a micro mouse. And what this thing would do is you put this into a maze and the, these are the sensors here and they would look down at the tops of walls and then the robot would walk around on its own. It was totally autonomous. And it would look at where the walls are and it would be mapping that into memory and then it would try to go back to the beginning and make a high speed run to the center. And uh, this, as you can see, had a Motorola 68000 solving the maze code. And it actually had a PIC microcontroller driving all this hardware and driving the motors to actually move the mouse around the, uh, the maze. And uh, underneath here, you can see some of the wires inside there. And it's hard to see inside there, but there's others way deep in there. That, that's all called wire wrap where you would actually take this tiny little tool and it was almost like sewing. You would just kind of like sew everything inside there. So this was my senior project, but it exemplifies the kind of stuff I do, like which was hardware mixed with software, the two of them together. So when I graduated with those two degrees, um, the job that I went into was doing something called motherboard BIOS engineering, and that was for Intel. And so I designed motherboards for Intel most of my career at Intel. I was there for 15 years, and most of that was motherboard BIOS. Most of that was in the desktop motherboard BIOS team. And so this right here, this is a motherboard that I actually, not as just any motherboard, this was my first gaming motherboard that I was the lead developer on, and this one was called Kingsburg internally, and it was called DP55KG externally. And anyways, I got... I didn't get to design the board, but I got to be involved in the design of the hardware of the board. But everything I did was on this tiny little chip right here. That's the BIOS chip. And that's the thing for some of you that don't know, when you turn a computer on, it's the BIOS that has to look at all of it, everything that's plugged into the computer, figure out how it works, configure all of it and wrap it up in a nice neat little package, and then hand it off to Windows or Linux or whatever or you know some kind of OS that's going to boot the system usually Windows and So um, the BIOS has to be aware of everything that's actually plugged in so BIOS guys are like hardware meets software kind of like stitched together Which is why I was interested in it. and That's why they wanted me to do it. And so um, most of my career was doing this stuff and if you guys uh, just as a note for the channel if you guys have questions about this stuff if you want to know why certain things work the way they are, what's different about a PCIe slot versus like a memory slot or something like that, I'd be happy to answer some of your questions and as long as I can, as, I'll, as long as I'm allowed to because I don't want to give away any company secrets or anything like that, but I'll try. Um, anyways, so I did this for most of the career, but 
then uh, eventually Intel closed the motherboard group. They don't make them anymore. It's all just like MSI, Gigabyte, Asus that do that. And so while I was at Intel, I left that group because I was recruited into this other group that was basically doing R&D work. And I was helping design the, the equipment that tests the actual processors and chipsets as they come off the manufacturing line and make sure that they work. And they needed a BIOS guy, but they also needed someone who did like a lot of software and that was kind of right where I was. So I did that for a while and I did that for the rest of my career pretty much until um, I was recruited about a year and a half ago by Hewlett Packard. And so at Intel, I was in Portland, Oregon. And then I was there for 15 years and I was recruited out of Intel by Hewlett Packard to go do BIOS engineering again, but this time not on desktops, on servers. You know, the big machines that you're probably watching this on right now as a server. So um, I left Portland and I moved my family 2,000 miles across the US and we moved to Houston. And that's what I'm doing right now. I work for Hewlett Packard and I write the BIOS code. I don't do any motherboard design for them, but I write the BIOS code along with the rest of the team uh, of developers for Hewlett Packard and the servers, uh, the Hewlett Packard Enterprise, technically. So, anyways, there is another example of something else I wanted to show you guys. Um, this is another hobby that I got into around 2006. I got into doing custom lightsabers, and uh, uh, there was a there's a group of guys that have been doing this for a long time, and some of you might be familiar with them. Um, Earth Plector uh, goes and he does the design of like the, uh, the electronic boards. Another guy named Nova Star has been doing sound fonts for a long time, and there's also other developers. But they call themselves Sabersmiths, like Mad Cow and stuff. Well, I was right there with those guys, you know, from 2000, like I don't know, six or seven, I think seven, up to like 2000, like 10, somewhere about there. I was like right in that community, and I was designing lightsabers with them, and I was bringing engineering expertise in. And uh, somewhere like 2009, I, I kind of walked away from that, and they've continued going, but. Uh, these are just, they're, they're literally lightsaber replicas, and this is a boot sound. And you can turn it on without an actual blade in it if you want, or you can actually put a blade in it. And these are just like hollow too, so they're good for dueling and stuff. So you get a sight of what we used to do. So these were a lot of fun. This was a great hobby, and I really enjoyed doing this. And again, a lot of those guys still actually get into it. But like I said, I got involved along with Earth, and um, I would actually, these are the electronic boards inside the, inside the lightsaber as well. I would actually hand solder these uh, up and, and uh, do repairs for them as well. Um, it was Irv that designed these boards. I threw little tips his way about, hey, why don't you try this, along with other people throwing tips in. But then there was some of them that I actually created here in the US, but I don't do that stuff anymore. And so this is my workbench, like I showed in an earlier video. And uh, this is where I've got like, you know, my scope and all my equipment. So when I'm actually doing small electronics projects, it all happens here. Anyways, I just wanted to show you guys, that's what I actually do. Because I wanted to um, just kind of level set what my background actually is. I wanted to open up the ability for you guys to ask questions if you're interested. And uh, I also kind of want to like test the waters and I want to see, do any, any of you want to know anything about stuff like this? Uh, do you want to know about any of these projects or just engineering in general or something specific about PC architecture or motherboards? Um, yeah, go ask me questions if you're interested. Other than that, thanks everybody for tuning in and I hope you all have a great day. Bye guys. Thank you.